In this video, we are going to see polar plot of a transfer function with three simple poles. Okay, the function looks like this: one over one plus s t one times one plus s t two times one plus s t three. Okay, we have three simple poles. As usual, for plotting polar plots, we substitute s with j omega. Okay, <clears throat> and if we rewrite this in magnitude and phase angle form, which is also known as polar plot, okay, polar form, one over one plus omega square t one square times square root of one plus omega square t two square times square root of one plus omega square t three square. This is the magnitude. And if we write phase angle phi, it will be minus tan inverse of omega t1 minus tan inverse of omega t2 minus tan inverse of omega t3. <coughs> okay. And now we take omega as variable and vary it from zero to infinity, and see how magnitude m and phi change. And plot these values respectively in a complex plane. Okay. <coughs> now, when omega equals to zero, the m value will be one. Okay. If you substitute omega value zero here, okay, it becomes one over square root of one times square root of one times square root of one. The resultant will be one. <coughs> and the phase angle, if you substitute omega equals zero in tan inverse terms, all tan inverse terms will be zero. So Phi will be zero. <clears throat> Take values when omega tends to infinity. If you substitute omega tends to infinity in magnitude term m, it tends to zero. Okay, and phi value tends to minus 270. Okay, because tan inverse of infinity is this term. You will have 90. So, including that minus, you will have minus 90 degrees, and this term will be again minus 90 degrees, and this term will be minus 90 degrees, and summation of these three will be three times 90s equals minus 270. Okay, <clears throat> and as values change from zero to infinity, magnitude keeps reducing. Okay, from one to zero, and phase angle. Changes from zero to minus two seventy. Okay. And now, if you look at this plot, okay, how it looks. Take a complex plane. And now, as we know, the phase angle is changing from zero to minus two seventy. So when it is zero, it will be on the real axis. Say, so take this point, and the magnitude is one. And the phase angle is zero. That's the reason why we are <coughs> pointing this point on real axis. And now, when phi is changing from zero to minus 270, it goes from this fourth quadrant to third quadrant, and goes into the second quadrant, and ends up at this point because the magnitude, when omega tends to infinity, is zero, and the angle will be minus 270. Okay, so it ends up at this. At this point, <clears throat> now we will calculate as the magnitude is reduce magnitude is reducing. If you look at a point at this particular angle phi, the magnitude is lesser than one. Okay, and if you look at for a other value at which <coughs> phi is looked at, and magnitude will be somewhere here. And if you go on plotting these values, how will the plot look? Okay. This plot comes out to be, it's a continuous one, okay. Comes out to be like this, okay. And the arrow mark directions we should specify is in this direction because omega equals to zero, the corresponding value of m is this, okay. So the increasing value of omega for which we got this values, that is the direction we specify it in, okay. It will be this way. This point is obtained, that is the zero value here, when omega tends to infinity. 
fine and now we have two points here okay this is the point when okay phase angle will be minus 90 degrees right the angle made with this real axis towards this in the clockwise direction so it is minus 90 degrees and the angle we measure from this point to this point I mean this point the angle will be minus 180 degrees now we want to find out what is the omega value at which the phase angle will be minus 180 degrees and phase angle will be minus 90 degrees <clears throat> to see this okay rewrite the formula which we got that is phi it is, which is tan inverse of omega t1 minus tan inverse of omega t2 minus tan inverse of omega t3 <coughs> now take phi minus 90 degrees then we can write this as minus tan inverse of omega 90 t1 okay I meant omega when the <coughs> the angle is 90 degrees and similarly we can write for this tan inverse of omega 90 t2 minus tan inverse of omega 90 t3 <coughs> fine and cancel this minus at the left hand side and right hand side they become plus okay <coughs> now take tan at the both sides okay tan 90 will be infinity which is equal to okay take this term as a take this term b okay take this term c we can write this as tan of a plus b plus c okay <coughs> we can write tan of a plus b plus c as tan a plus tan b plus tan c minus tan a tan b tan c okay over okay divided by 1 minus tan a tan b okay minus tan a tan c minus tan b tan c <coughs> now as this term is infinity okay the denominator should be 0 okay and the numerator can't be because we know we are changing omega from 0 to infinity so omega is in somewhere between this because we know when omega is infinity the magnitude is 0 but we are looking at a point where the magnitude is some finite value and the phase angle is minus 90 so the denominator should be 0 and what is tan a a is tan inverse of omega t1 okay tan of tan inverse of omega t1 will be omega t1 okay if you write this denominator we can write this as 1 minus omega t1 times omega t2 minus omega t1 omega t3 minus omega t2 omega t3 okay <coughs> equals 0 we can write this as omega square t1 t2 plus t1 t3 plus t2 t3 equals 1 now we can write this omega that is omega 90 as plus or minus okay 1 over square root of okay, square root of t1 t2 plus t2 t3 plus t1 t3 okay and we take only positive values okay we don't take this minus value because we know omega we are changing from 0 to infinity so we take positive value of it okay this is omega 90 degrees and now <coughs> we also can calculate for this value when when is the phase angle one eight, minus 180 degrees what is the omega at that value if you look at that same formula that is uh, <coughs> this one okay in in the previous case it was 90 degrees now we substitute 180 degrees there okay it becomes okay minus 180 degrees equals minus tan inverse of omega t1 minus tan inverse of omega t2 minus tan inverse of omega t3 okay if you cancel this minus okay we'll get 180 degrees equals tan inverse of omega t1 plus tan inverse of omega t2 plus tan inverse of omega t3 if you take tan at both sides we'll get tan tan of 180 degrees will be 0 and we can write this as tan of a plus b plus c which we have seen the formula 
that is tan of a plus tan of b plus tan of c minus tan a tan b tan c okay so we can write this as <coughs> omega t1 plus omega t2 plus omega t3 minus omega cube t1 t2 t3 okay over 1 minus omega square t1 t2 minus omega square t1 t3 minus omega square t2 t3 okay now this can be 0 when the numerator is equal to 0 okay <coughs> we can take this equate the numerator to 0 we will get take omega common t1 plus t2 plus t3 minus omega cube t1 t2 t3 equals 0 we can rewrite this as omega square equals <coughs> t1 plus t2 plus t3 over t1 t2 t3 if you take the values we are going to take positive value of the square root okay so it will be square root of t1 plus t2 plus t3 over t1 t2 t3 okay and this omega is 180 degrees okay the frequency or the angular frequency at which the phase angle will be minus 180 degrees that is this omega which is square root of t1 plus t2 plus t3 by t1 t2 t3 now if we <coughs> draw the plot with all these values specified if you look at this plot okay take a complex plane and uh, when omega equals 0 the value of this is 1 okay and the plot will be something like this okay and the arrow marks are in this direction okay and at this point the omega is minus 180 degrees okay or say 180 degrees which is equal to square root of which we have derived t1 plus t2 plus t3 whole divided by t1 t2 t3 okay and at this point at which omega the value of omega at which the angle is minus 90 degrees equals 1 divided by square root of t1 t2 plus t2 t3 plus t1 t3 okay <coughs> and this is the direction in which omega is changing from 0 to infinity okay this is how the polar plot is for a transfer function or a function with three poles which is like this 1 over 1 plus st1 times 1 plus st2 times 1 plus st3 this is the real axis this is imaginary axis